Hey everybody, John Van Dyke here for New Jersey Expo. Today is Thursday, December 14th, 2023. Time is 12.03. Okay, so I have a story here that I actually kind of stumbled on through somebody else uh, about what happens to a good cop who reports bad cops. This comes out of Ocean County Prosecutor's Office. What happened in Ocean County, Ocean County Prosecutor's Office. Now, this was last year, March of 2022, but it's just a good example of what happens when you have an officer who tries to do the right thing. And when they do, they get they get punished. And, uh, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day, Glenn, uh, one of my subscribers out or fans out there, Glenn, who happened to... <laughs> Happened to see me working out in a park a lot and yelled over, and uh, so I got spotted. But uh, I had said to my, you know, he's talking about good cops, and I said there are there are no good cops. Good cops are unemployed. So anyway, uh, this story here was reported on uh, Transpar Transparency NJ, and it says Ocean County Prosecutor's Office quietly paid out four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to settle former detective's whistleblower lawsuit. Here it is, right there. Okay, let's read the story and find out what happened to this good cop. On March 25th, 2022, Ocean County discreetly paid, agreed to pay $450,000 to one of its former detectives who claimed that he was fired for objecting to and reporting Official misconduct within the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office. Now, I have no confidence in the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office. They've been covering my opinion. They've been covering for this child predator, Richard Conti, the former sergeant from Ocean Township. I mean, Ocean from uh, Hal Township Police Department. Uh, they had a mistrial last year, and nothing's happened so far, and I got a feeling nothing's going to happen. And when you question them, they don't answer. They have no problem putting 10, 10 paragraph. Uh, narratives up about somebody like us that gets arrested but when they're doing that doing their job right there mum's the word and I think they botched the whole uh, I think they botched the whole investigation up as a mistrial and I got a feeling there's going to be no trial uh, in his lawsuit Stephen Mecca who was hired as a detective in 2004 oh he's not, he hasn't been around that long Claimed to have experienced adverse employment consequences, including being overlooked for promotions and transferred to less suitable units, as well as facing unjust disciplinary actions and ultimately being fired. He claimed that these issues arose primarily from conflicts with his superior, Vincent Petreca, dating back to 2006, when Charles Kyle who Mecca claimed is known to be close to Petreca, became chief of detectives in 2007. Mecca's assignments include investigating official misconduct by public officials in Oshie County. In September of 2010, Petreca allegedly directed Mecca to, Mecca to go after prominent political figures within the Republican Party without probable cause. Mecca said that he reported Petreca Pet, uh, Petreka's orders to Joseph Mitchell and Kyle and that both of them told him that he was risking his career by resisting Petreka's demands. Throughout 2010, Mecca said he repeatedly asked Mitchell about the progress into his internal affairs investigation in Petreka, but received no clear response. Mecca said he was assigned to lead investigation of political corruption in Little Egg Harbor and uncovered various illegal activities, reporting corruption in December 2010. Mecca claimed he was reassigned away from the public corruption corruption investigation to trial grant to the trial grand jury unit and then to the domestic violence unit. Mecca said that these were dis dis were desirable units known internally as punishment assignments. Shortly after joining the domestic violence unit, Mecca said he had a dispute with Vincent Frulio over what he said was Frulio's personal relationship with a case that the OCPO was prosecuting. This dispute, he said, immediately preceded his transfer to the domestic violence weapon return unit. In 2010, Mecca said that Frulio told members of his unit to continue signing Sergeant Abrams in as if he was working when he was in fact absent due to medical issues. So. He wanted him to participate in some time theft. Frulio announced, if anyone has a problem with this, they'll answer to me and, and the chief. According to the lawsuit, when Mecca reported this, Kyle allegedly asked him, why do you want to do this? 
report the alleged cover-up of Abrams' absence. It will destroy our office. In 2013, Joseph Coronado became the new Ocean County prosecutor. Mecca said Kyle instructed him to work with the FBI regarding corruption in Red Bank. He said that Chief of Detectives Glenn Miller later told him that the FBI duties were part-time and that he was still primarily working for, with the Domestic Violence Unit. Uh, while working with the FBI, Mecca said that he submitted detailed written reports about the misconduct criminal activity in the prosecutor's office and about official misconduct in various county and municipal offices, which he had discovered in the past years. <laughs> Not hard to discover, okay? I've been discovering it for the past five years. Uh, let's see... Uh, during September 2013, Mecca said that a domestic violence complaint was lodged against Jackson Police Deputy Chief Matthew Kunz, which resulted in his weapons being confiscated. Mecca alleged that Mitchell and Petreca ordered Sergeant Nayrud to return Chief Kunz's guns, guns, guns to him without notice to the victim and prior to any hearing. Mecca said that his, excuse me, that his objection to his process caused Frulio Miller and senior staff attorney John Corson Jr. to become furious about its objections and threaten him with a charge of insubordination. Wow. Mecca said that he repeatedly attempts to formally report these issues. Even the higher authorities were met with resistance, superficial investigations, or outright refusal. Mecca claimed that after insisting that his complaints against Pacheca and others be forwarded to the Division of Criminal Justice in Trenton, there was a single interview by the division during which none of this evidential documents were accepted. Although he claimed he was promised a second long interview, he said that no second interview was ever scheduled. Mecca claimed that Coronado, Corson, and Miller later told him that the matter was fully investigated and resulted in charges being not sustained. And there's more to it. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll put the link in the description. You can uh, go read it yourself but it's been long known we all know that when a good cop steps up tries to do the right thing tries to weed out the bad ones and as soon as they do it's done it's over this is what happens and you got a guy here he's starting what 2004 2007 so he's got 10 years on the job he's got more he's got about 15 years on the job you know he's got a little he's making good money he's probably got a house and and bills to pay and, and you know you it's the same old story that these cops have to decide. Well, what do I do? I keep my mouth shut, keep my job, my house, and my wife, and my car, and a roof over my kids' heads? Or do I uh, risk all that? So, you know, the corruption in this state is unbelievable, people. It, it, it's all over the place. It's just different degrees where you go. you got some departments that are relatively clean and not much going on. Then you got others. It's just, it's just never ending with them, with the corruption. The, the corruption is... It's bad, and I got a feeling this is part of the reason why nobody's applying to be a law enforcement officer. Because one, nobody wants to be involved in all this violence against people. We see what they're doing on uh, with all the YouTube videos and stories that I report. And who wants to go to work where you, you see people doing bad things around you? It's 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 disgusting. You know, I've seen it in jobs I where I saw somebody doing something that was wasn't good, and you know, I had to keep my mouth shut. But I wasn't involved in law enforcement, so not that big of a deal. But it, it, it's it, it's bad, you know. That that's all I can say. I can imagine what this, this detective had to go through every day. He's going to work, and he's he's surrounded by piranhas all around him. So, okay, as I said, the link will be in the description. Let me know what you think about it. I got a good cop here trying to uh, weed out corruption. He's trying to do his job, and. Uh, the higher forces don't want it. The Blue Line gang members don't allow it. You know, There's no room in the Blue Line gang for good cops. I'm John Van Dyke for New Jersey Exposed. Till next time, people.